Hello, my name is Dr. Anthony Kiefer. I'm a senior lecturer at James Cook University in Townsville and also consultant at North Coast Veterinary Specialist and Referral Centre on the Sunshine Coast. The topic for today is dental radiology, tooth resorptions in dogs, uh, and this is presented to you by IM3, the veterinary dental company, which is a well-known uh, veterinary dental company in Australia and also all over the world as well. So currently there is not much known about idiopathic tooth resorptions in dogs. Uh, there's very little information in the literature. Um, we don't know the cause, um, but we do know a little bit about it. We do know that it does occur in middle age to older dogs. It seems to affect premolar teeth more than any other teeth, um, although it can affect other teeth such as canine teeth. It consists mainly of two types of resorption. One is external replacement resorption, which is a non-inflammatory type. And then we have an inflammatory type or external inflammatory resorption, which usually is associated with inflammation of the gingival tissues at the crestal bone level. So around the cervical area of the tooth, or it can also be associated with uh, pulp necrosis and apical resorption. Uh, of the uh, root of the tooth, uh, but we can also see it with tumor and cyst invasion. So when they tumors or cysts invade the surrounding tissue, they can often resorb tooth structure as well. Currently, intraoral radiography is the only way to diagnose tooth resorptions in dogs and also in cats. So you can see uh, the image on the left hand side here uh, is a CR7 unit. I'm processing a, a radiograph. Uh, and it is really imperative that we do take intraoral radi radiography, especially when we're dealing with uh, middle age to older animals. There's very little literature on uh, tooth resorptions in dogs. This uh, study uh, out of California, Santiago Peralto, um, it looked at, it was a retrospective study, it looked at 224 dogs that were admitted for some form of uh, dental treatment. Uh, they did full mouth radiographs on these dogs. These dogs were greater than one year of age and they found about 53% of the dogs had some form of tooth resorption. So uh, it, it is quite prevalent out there. From that study, they found that about 34% of the resorptions were classified as external replacement resorption. So this is where uh, part of the root is being replaced by bone. And 25% uh, was associated with external inflammatory resorption. And to a lesser extent, uh, external surface resorption occurred in about 4.5% of the teeth examined. They used a classification that uh, is used in human dental literature. The study does highlight the importance of taking full mouth radiographs in middle aged to older dogs. So from the study, if you look at the page on the left hand side, external surface resorption or ESR can be the earliest sign of tooth resorption. You can see that the parental ligament is still intact in this area, but there's loss of tooth structure in the root of this tooth. External replacement resorption um, could be an extension from surface resorption where there's actually uh, replacement of more of the root of the tooth, if not the whole root of the tooth with bone. Uh, so it's similar to a type two resorption in cats. And then external inflammatory resorption, you can see in this uh, tooth 409, the first molar tooth in the dog uh, is can be associated, associated with pulp necrosis in the dog. So you can see quite a large lytic area here around each root and loss of tooth structure as well associated with that. But it also can be associated with uh, tooth resorptions, idiopathic tooth resorptions associated with um, inflammation occurring at the crestal bone level uh, and destruction of tooth structure there. And often with that, you'll see uh, gingival inflammation associated with that. If you look at the radiograph of the uh, left lower quadrant, I uh, can see 
that we have uh, 2304 here, uh, and there's a number of resort pivolations occurring here. So we'll go through these. So this is an example of inflammatory resorption. So clinically, you'd see some inflammation in the gingival tissues in this area uh, in 2305. Uh, in the next tooth, uh, 306, um, first of all, we have some fused roots, so it's uh, normally a two-rooted tooth, but you can see there's surface resorption. So the periodontal ligament is intact, but there's resorption of tooth structure there. The next tooth, uh, tooth 307, uh, it has a combination of inflammatory resorption and external root resorption as well. So you can see uh, root resorption or replacement resorption occurring here. Uh, but you can also see that there is some resorption occurring at the crestal bone level in the root, uh, and that will be associated with gingival inflammation. When we go to the next tooth, to 308, we can see that it's similar to 2307. We have a combination of uh, external replacement resorption and also inflammatory resorption here at the cervical area of the tooth, but you can see it's more advanced than 2307 where there's nearly complete replacement of the roots by bone. If we look at tooth 309, uh, it actually has apical resorption, um, so external inflammatory resorption occurring around the roots of, tooth, of the mesial and distal root of 309. So in this situation, um, all these teeth would need to be extracted. You could save tooth 306, but in the whole scheme of things, you may decide that it's better to be removed considering that it's undergoing early stages of tooth resorption. Another situation here where we have a clinical photograph, you can see this quadrant four. Uh, and we have the radiograph, corresponding radiograph below. So in this situation, um, tooth uh, 405 has uh, external replacement resorption um, and there could also be some inflammation in this area, uh, although clinically it doesn't look too bad. Uh, again, replacement resorption in 406, 407, 408, but inflammatory resorption occurring uh, on the distal side of 408 here, uh, but also inflammatory resorption associated with pulp necrosis. You can see quite a large lytic area here uh, around the mesial root, and it's also corresponding around the distal root. You can't see the distal root in this situation. So in this case, you would uh, certainly be extracting all those teeth. You can also see that there's a risk here because we have uh, lysis in this area here of the ventral cortex and there could be a risk of uh, jaw fracture in that area as well. Uh, a case where we're seeing inflammatory resorption uh, occurring in the cervical area of a tooth. So if you look at this canine tooth, a clinical photograph, there's inflammation uh, in this area, like pinpoint inflammation. If we raise a small envelope flap, you can see that there's a large resorptive lesion here and uh, really radiograph shows the extent of the resorption. You can see how large the resorptive lesion here and this um, uh, requires that the tooth be extracted because that will be entering the pulpal tissue. Another situation where we have resorption occurring in quadrant three, um, here we have uh, external uh, surface resorption around the distal root of th um, 306. We can also see um, surface resorption and replacement resorption occurring around 307 and 308. Uh, and in this situ uh, and also we can actually see a, a root fracture. You can see a little uh, radiolucent line running here, so that would indicate a root fracture. So in <clears throat> this situation, this tooth would need to be extracted. Now, what we don't know is what starts the process, the cause, and we don't know how the process continues. So uh, external surface resorption may be the start of the process, and this can lead to external replacement resorption. That's what we assume is happening. The inflammatory resorption becomes the main component of the disease when we get bacteria involved with the resorption. So when bacteria 
uh, when the resorbed deflation gets to the crestal bone level in the cervical area of the tooth, um, oral bacteria can become involved in the situation. But at present, we don't know the cause. Uh, we don't really know the process, how this, uh, the pathological process continues. It appears that external resorption process can affect all quadrants eventually. So just be aware of that. Once you see one resorptive lesion, you may have other resorptions occurring. And this is very true for cats as well. Here we have an inflammatory resorption uh, in the crown of cervical area of tooth um, 308 and 309. 309 here and 308, you can see that there's nearly uh, quite large destruction of the tooth structure here, the blue circle here, uh, and a smaller amount of tooth destruction here in the uh, tooth 309, but with 309 there's actually involvement of the pulp, so we've got some pulp necrosis occurring here. Uh, and in this situation, we would have to extract both those two teeth. Um, in the 308 case, you may not be able to get the whole root out, but you would attempt to try to get the whole root out if you possibly can. In 309, you would need to get the whole root out. Now, we do know that there are known causes of tooth resorption, so mainly the external inflammatory resorption, uh, and we see that uh, with severe periodontitis. Uh, we also see that um, with uh, oral tumours, uh, odontogenic uh, of tooth origin or non-odontogenic like fibrosarcoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and we also can see that with cysts as well. Uh, so you can see in the photograph, uh, the radiograph down here, that this is a tooth resorption. You can see there's resorption of tooth uh, 410 here, uh, and there's a resorption, a small resorptive lesion in the root of tooth 409 here. Uh, and this was due to a foreign body being stuck in this area for several months, causing tooth resorption. Other known causes of tooth resorptions, this is uh, in A, the radiograph here, this is a plasma cytoma. You can see the amount of resorption, inflammatory resorption occurring here, uh, and also in the mesial roots of uh, this tooth uh, 108. Uh, so quite a large, you can see the amount of lysis occurring in the bone. If you look at uh, B here, this is also dentigerous cysts. So you can see the amount of resorption occurring in this uh, canine tooth here, uh, premolar one, which was probably going to be causing the dentigerous cyst has been extracted. You can see the extent of the cystic lesion here. And you can see it's also resorbing the mesial root of uh, tooth 406 as well. Now we do see tooth resorptions in man. So they do occur in man. Um, the causes of them, uh, we can have periapical, which is our inflammatory resorption. Um, they can occur with tumors and cysts, as we've mentioned before. Um, tooth movement in man can also cause tooth resorption. So if you have braces, there's a risk of tooth resorption. Uh, impacted teeth, so, such as dentigerous cysts, can also cause resorption. And then we do have an idiopathic section as well. Uh, as a part of the external resorptions occurring in man. So the same sort of classification that we've been using in dogs is used in man as well. You can see the uh, radiograph and the CT scan uh, on the right hand side here. Here we have a, quite a large resorptive lesion in a sizer tooth here. You can see the extent of it. Uh, on the CT scan, um, the cone beam CT, you can see the extent of the lesion here. It's on the lingual side or the palatal side of the tooth. Uh, you can see it here as well. Qu quite an extensive lesion and in, uh, an idiopathic cervical resorption occurring there. So the most common cause of inflammatory resorption, external inflammatory resorption in man at least, uh, in the tooth is due to trauma. And this can be related to uh, earlier trauma and then years later you can actually see inflammatory resorption occurring in the tooth structure. Um, we don't know if that's a situation in dogs and cats. We, uh, we're really not certain. I can see another type of inflammatory resorption. Uh, this is invasive cervical resorption, which is another type of inflammatory 
tooth resorption in man, and you can see the extent of the lesion here in this incisor, um, the second uh, incisor tooth, lateral incisor here. You can see the lesion on cone beam here, uh, and uh, it's, it's usually um, a situation where sometimes we can fill these lesions, but often um, we've got to consider tooth extraction as a part of the, uh, as, as, uh, the management of the case. So this uh, appearance is similar to what we see with external inflammatory resorption in dogs and the type one lesions in cats. How do we manage idiopathic tooth resorption in dogs? And do we manage it the same way as in cats? At present, there's no consensus amongst veterinary dentists as how to manage these types of resorptions. One of the management issues is we do not know how quickly the tooth resorption progresses in dogs and cats. Um, hopefully studies will come out looking at the progress of these lesions, but at the moment we don't know. These are my thoughts on, or my guidelines on how we manage these. So if we're dealing with external replacement resorption, uh, if, in, if it's in the root of the tooth and uh, more at the apex, then we, we, it would be acceptable to radiographically monitor these um, in practice. When we're dealing with an external inflammatory resorption or EIR, uh, this usually is associated with either inflammation at the crestal bone level in the, root, in the tooth, cervical area of the tooth, or associated with pulp necrosis. Um, as I said before, it can be associated with tumors. So the best option here is to extract the tooth. When we have surface resorption, again, as with replacement resorption, monitoring would be acceptable for this. Um, knowing that there's a strong chance that surface resorption can end up being a replacement resorption. Now, we do know that type 1 tooth resorptions in cats has a strong association with periodontal disease, and it is recommended for these dogs as well that an active dental home care plan is put into place uh, and, and a daily plan such as tooth brushing or the use of chlorhexidine. Thank you for this watching this webinar. Um, my, again, my name is Dr. Anthony Kiefer. This has been brought to you by the Veterinary Dental Company uh, and the Vet Expo. Um, if you need further uh, information, resources on dental radiography, please go to the IM3 website, www.im3vet.com.au. Thank you.